What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with another Science of Exponents lesson. Today, we're going to be looking at exponents with negative bases. So, let's check out what our objective is today. Our objective today, today you will be given an exponent that has a negative base and be able to solve and write the number in standard form. So just a quick review of our math vocabulary. If you've been with us, you don't need to write this down again. Uh, but if this is your first Instruct Beats lesson and you need to write this down, this is just some basics that we'll be talking about throughout today, right? So here we have um, our base number, right, which is the number you're multiplying, and our exponent. The exponent tells you how many copies of the base number are going to be multiplied together, right? And a lot of times we see this in what we call exponential form, right? This is just a review of the last lesson. And then when we write that, we might write it out in expanded form to help us understand and to solve it, especially if we don't have a calculator, right? So today we're going to be about exponential form. That's when we have the base and the exponent. And then the exponent telling us how many times we need to uh, multiply the copy of that base number. And just like we talked about last lesson, I'm going to be writing down this one right here because that's going to help us understand our zero exponent rule, right? And so when we're multiplying exponents, what we're really doing, we're really starting with a one, right? Our identity property multiplication. And then we're multiplying the copies of that base number. Now, you see this is a positive base. What happens when we have a negative base? Let's take a trip to the lab to check that out. All right, so here we have the same base, right? And just like last lesson, we have our exponents. So our base is gonna be negative five, and we're gonna start with this four, right? So if I was writing this in expanded form, okay, right? I'm gonna start with the one, and then my base is going to be a negative five, okay? So I'm gonna write that in parentheses, and I'm gonna have four copies of that negative five. All right, I'm only gonna apologize once for my handwriting. It will be bad the whole video, but I apologize for that, right? So here we have one and then five, negative five times negative five times negative five times negative five. If you've noticed, I put that in parentheses um, and that's gonna be really important, right? And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but we just need to understand our negative multiplication rules, right? So I know that five times five times five times five or five to the fourth power would be 625. So now the question is, should this be negative 625 or positive 625, okay? Well, if you remember our negative multiplication rules, two negatives make a positive, right? So I'm just gonna kind of do this. So two negative fives would make a positive, and then two negative fives would make a positive. So if I multiplied a positive times a positive, my product, or how I'd write it in standard form, should be positive. So negative five to the fourth power is 625. If you understand your negative multiplication rules and what exponents mean, this would be a pretty simple lesson for you. So now let's check out negative five to the third power. So here, right, I'm starting with my one and then I'm multiplying that by three copies of negative five. That's what my exponent told us and my base was negative five. So when I do that, I know that that's gonna be 125, right? Five times five times five is 125. The question is, should it be negative or positive? So this one I'm gonna actually sh uh, solve it out, right? So we know that one times negative five would be negative five. Negative five times negative five right here, okay, would be positive 25 because two negatives make a positive. Check out our lesson on that if you don't know why. And then if I'm multiplying that by my negative five, that's positive times a negative, which is 125 but this should be a negative 125. So negative five to the third power, when I'm following my negative multiplication rules, gives me negative 125. All right, let's check out negative five to the second power. So I have my negative one, and I'm gonna be multiplying that by two copies of negative five, because that's what my exponent told us. Obviously five times five is 25. Sorry, that should have been a positive one. Don't know what I was thinking. And so I know I have negative times negative, which is gonna be positive, so this is gonna be a positive 25, okay? So again, not very hard. Now let's check this out, right? So here we have one times one copy of negative five. So a positive times a negative would be a negative, so this should be negative five. And then we get into the zero exponent rule, okay? So here, I'm starting with one, and I'm multiplying it by zero copies of negative five. 
So one times zero copies would just be one, okay? So again, not too difficult, but I do wanna point out a couple different patterns, right? If you notice right here, I have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, okay? And if you look at the exponent, it seems like when I had a even exponent, my answer was positive. When I had an odd exponent, my answer was negative, right? So even, positive, odd, negative. And then of course you have your random zero, okay? So that pattern is gonna hold true because of the negative multiplication rules. It Let's go ahead and jot that exponent shortcut down. See what I did there? Exponent with a power of shortcut. You're welcome, math nerds everywhere. So if you have a negative raised to an even power, that's gonna give you a positive standard form, okay? If you have a negative raised to an odd number, that is always going to give you a negative standard form, okay? Now, hopefully you notice that I had some parentheses right here. Uh-oh, what was that? It's time to go back to the lab for some more math knowledge. All right, so if you noticed, all of my bases had parentheses around it, okay? Now, why? Because this is negative four raised to a power of three, right, or cubed. This looks like negative four cubed, but is it really? To answer this, and this will come up, you have to understand your order of operations, right? So you have your parentheses, then your exponents, then your multiplication and division, left to right, then your addition subtraction, quick instructed beats plug. We have a dope song about the order of operations. All right, now, when you're doing this, right, you always do your exponents first before you do your multiplication and division. That's important right here. So here we have this one to be negative four, okay, times negative four, times negative four. I'm using a dot for multiplication instead of an x. And of course, you could multiply, you could have uh, put a one right here and multiplied that, but just like we talked about last lesson, typically we don't do that. And when you solve this, that would be negative 64, okay? If we did this, really what you have to do, you're gonna solve this part first because when you have this negative sign, when there's no parentheses, really that's like saying you have a negative one out here. So we're gonna solve the exponent and then multiply it by negative one, right? So we have four times four times four, which of course would be 64. And then we multiply that by a negative one. For this one, you're still gonna get a negative 64. So for this one, it doesn't matter. But let's take a look at when the exponent is even. When the exponent's even, this would make this negative four times negative four, again, you could start with the one right there, but you don't have to. This is going to be a positive 16. Here, we can infer that there's a negative one outside of that now, okay? We'd have positive 16, but now we have to multiply it by that negative one, so it's gonna make it a negative 16, okay? Because in order of operations, you have to do your exponents before you multiply, all right? So this is just something to think about as you do it. There is a difference, okay, if you have the parentheses around the negative four versus if you don't, and it comes down to order of operations. When the parentheses are around it, that's saying, hey, this is one term. This is my whole base number right here. When it's not around it, okay, like right here, that means the negative sign is separate from the exponent, right, which means, hey, there's really a negative one that I'm gonna multiply by at the end, all right? So that's just something you have to practice, which takes us to our U try, right? So if you've never been with Instructor Beats, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pause the video in a second, you're gonna write these uh, exponential forms out in expanded form and then in standard form, and then push play to check your work. So go ahead and pause it, try it, and then push play. All right, so hopefully you just paused it, hopefully you just tried it, let's check it out. So here I see that I have parentheses around my negative two, which means this is negative two is gonna be my base, and I'm gonna have five copies of that. So I'm gonna start with a one, and then I'm gonna have multiply that by five copies of negative two. And before I even solve it, I know because my exponent is odd, my answer is gonna be negative in standard form. And when I solve that out, you should have gotten negative 32 for your standard form. 
So your next one, now I don't have a parentheses around my base number, which means I need to think about my order of operations. I need to do my exponent first and then multiply it by negative one. So I have positive six as my base and I have four copies of that. So I'm gonna start with one and I'm gonna multiply that times four copies of six. And if it, that was the end of it, my standard form would be 1,296. But because I have to multiply it by this negative one outside of my parentheses, it's going to make my answer negative 1,296 for standard form. Again, you can't just look at the exponent for this and follow the even and odd uh, rule that we talked about because this isn't a negative base. It's really a positive base because it wasn't in that parentheses. So kind of look at the difference here. We have two, le uh, two left and we have a negative 10 as my base because it's in parentheses. So I start with one and I'm gonna use an X for my multiplication. So I have negative 10 times negative 10. And when I solve that out, that should be positive 100. I had a negative base and my exponent was even, which tells me it should be a positive standard form. Now down here, I don't have parentheses, which means I need to do my exponent first, right? So I still start with one and I'm now my base is positive 10, okay? So when I solve that, that would be 100 but because I have to multiply by this negative one out here and follow my order of operations, that's gonna make it a negative 100. So hopefully you got those. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it, but. Welcome to the challenge zone. So here we go. We have two exponents raised to the zero power. This is a challenge zone because it's taking your mind and pushing it to the next level. Go ahead and pause this and then push play to see how you did. All right, so here, okay, I have a negative eight as my um, base. So I'm gonna start with one when I write an expanded form and I have zero copies of that. So one by itself would just be one. For this next one, it's not in parentheses, okay? So I don't have a negative base, I have a positive eight as a base, and then I'm gonna have to multiply whatever that is at the end by my negative one that's outside the parentheses. So again, I start with one. I have zero copies of positive eight, which means my standard form would be one, except now I have to multiply it by my negative sign at outside, so my standard form for this, or my final product, if I follow my order of operations, would be negative one, okay? This one, when you do the initial step of solving for the exponent, it does follow the zero exponent rule, but then if I follow my order of operations, I have my negative sign out here, which means I need to turn whatever that product is and multiply it by negative one, which leaves me with a negative one. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options online. We really appreciate you checking out Instructed Beats. Check out all our other songs, relaxing music, timers, and our merchandise at InstructedBeats.com. We'd love for you to join our Instructed Beats family by subscribing. Like the video, leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructed Beats, out.